Hello, everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell with News and Views on Friday, February 27th, 2015. And I just I just finished my members' vid chat on the website, and I missed my um, News and Views last night because I normally do them on Thursday. It's just because things have been so hectic, I haven't been able to get to it, and I wanted to make sure to get to this one before the weekend came. I've got a lot of stuff to come up on the weekend and uh, I didn't want to forget to do this because one of the predictions that I've been uh, making and several of you have been commenting about on the website and various talks that we've had is that 2015 is going to be the year of the propaganda war. It's going to be, as I discussed with uh, former Assistant Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Catherine Austin Fitz. Uh, she had her tenure there during the first Bush administration. Um, one of the things that we've discussed and that she and I have also discussed is that increasingly, as the American unipolar agenda seems to be insanely pushed by some in Washington, that we're going to see an increasing culture war. We're going to see an increasing propaganda war. Well, no sooner said than done. This appeared in an article yesterday on Russia Today, and this is what I wanted to talk about yesterday on RT and just didn't get to it. I do want to talk about it here. And this is very interesting. They're reporting that, quote, despite the U.S. bottomless public relations budget to influence overseas, people are not attracted by what's on offer, as they are tired of U.S. interventionism, exceptionalism, and the bombing of their countries, Daniel McAdams of the Ron Paul Institute told RT. Now, this is in response to Secretary of State John Kerry wanting the United States to boost its $700 million propaganda budget even more, all right? And I think this is totally true. I think Mr. McAdams is correct. Nobody's buying anymore, and we'll get to the reasons why. But one of it is hinted at the use of the word exceptionalism. America is now uh, billing itself as the indispensable exceptional country necessary to, to world order and so on and so forth. Now, that may or may not be true, but the problem is that in the past, exceptionalism simply means has meant narcissism and pathology. In other words, the rules apply to everybody else, but not to Washington, all right? U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said he is concerned the U.S. is falling behind when it comes to putting out information. He stressed that RT's influence is growing worldwide and the U.S. doesn't have an equivalent that can be heard in Russian. Claiming that RT has huge costs, he asked for money to be provided for the Broadcasting Board of Governors in the United States. RT's budget for 2015 is $220 million, while the budget of the Broadcasting Board of Governors in the United States is $721 million. Kerry also heaped praise on the appointment of Andrew Lack as head of the BBG, who recently put RT into the same context as ISIS and Boko Haram. Now, I'm sorry here, guys. This is why your propaganda isn't selling. Because whatever you think of Mr. Putin and his administration in Russia, whatever you think is going on there, they're not walking around beheading people on television and on RT, all right? So it's that kind of characterization, it's that kind of hysteria that is losing your audience. You people are nuts when you make comparisons like that, and you can put me down on your file for saying it, because that's just insanity. But getting back to the RT article here, John Kerry insinuated that the U.S., this is RT asking the question of Daniel McAdams, is losing the public relations war with Russia. What do you make of that? Daniel McAdams responded, I'll say one thing. The BBG budget, I'm skipping a bit, is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how the U.S. government influences media overseas. There's probably another hundred million 
in direct support to so-called independent news publications overseas, and these are all different newspapers and broadcasting outfits that tow the U.S. line that aren't directly U.S. related. There are also various problems, <coughs> pardon me, programs in the U.S. government. <coughs> RT's question then is, given what you've just said, do you think there will be people in the U.S. government that might disagree with John Kerry? And David McAdams' response is as follows. Yes, and there is a solution. You've got to double the money. They want to double the money to sell something that nobody is buying. That's the problem. The problem is the policy, not the PR that tries to sell the policy. <clears throat> In that hilarious clip from Victoria Newland, she says, Oh, RT is just a tiny audience, and we have a wonderful diversity in the media in the U.S. Sorry, that is not the case, and I totally agree with him here. The reason the U.S. is losing the propaganda war is not because of the packaging, it's because of the policy, number one. And number two, the U.S. corporate media is now homogenized. It is totally subservient. It is totally a lap poodle. There is no genuine investigative journalism anymore. And what little there is, what little alternative is being done on the Internet or by outlets like RT. All right. So sorry, I'm, that is not the case. I'm personally not any fan of gov government-sponsored media, but the fact of the matter is, this is McAdams, is that the so-called private media in the U.S. marches in lockstep with the White House and the State Department, and there is no diversity in the mainstream media. So he's just, she's just absolutely wrong in what she says. RT's next question is this. What is the reason do you think that RT is getting so much attention amongst the U.S. government officials at the moment? And listen to David McAdams' reply. You have alternative people like the Ron Paul Institute on your program. Now stop and consider the incongruity of this, folks. You have a more or less doctrinaire, libertarian, free market advocate like Ron Paul who has a television show on Russia Today on one of the official media organs of the Russian government. And this is the problem. And if you look at Russia Today's programming, folks, you'll find a lot more diversity and a lot more uh, American shows. Larry King is on Russia Today. Professor Stephen Cohen is on Russian Today, Russia Today. And you don't see them on the American media, except maybe every now and then on some of the major media outlets where their views are constantly being challenged by the same old, same old homogenization. All right. So in other words, the diversity is in RT, but no longer in the American media. So the propaganda war is heating up. Now listen to what else he says. You challenge the paradigm, and people are interested in that. People are tuning out of news in the U.S. at record levels. They don't watch TV news. They don't take newspapers. It's all boring. They all say the same things. When something comes along, the alternative media is a different story in the U.S., and it is growing by leaps and bounds, and that's also true because that's the only place where independent thinking and freedom of expression and opinion is going on, and it's not marching in lockstep with the powers that be. People that are offering a different perspective, Americans are increasingly finding it attractive. And this is the problem, folks, and we're watching now the propaganda war heat up. Now, what do I suspect is going to happen as a result of all of this? I think there's two things you have to be very careful of, and already we're hearing, this, we're hearing talk of this. There's now talk of regulating the Internet, Internet neutrality, and so on and so forth. And what that really means is neutrality really means homogenization and bland news, the infotainment that has replaced American news and now become the main driving force on, on American and Western television. That's what you're going to get on the Internet, like it or not. 
Now, that's one thing that's going to occur. The other thing that's going to occur is you're going to see, and this is a prediction. We, we talked about this last year. This was coming this year. It's already very self-evidently started. It's already coming. You're going to see an increasing attempt to dress up the same old policy in new verbiage, all right? And the attempt will be made to pretend that there's a real policy debate and that there's real policy change. Be aware of that. Now, let me give you one example already that occurred today as I was talking with my member on the website in the vid chat. News came from Moscow that Mr. Nemtsov was assassinated. And Nemtsov was, of course, one of the principal opponents of President Putin in Russia. And then as we were talking, the news came that already Mr. Putin had taken personal charge of the investigation. Now, here's the problem and the way that the propaganda is going to spin it. You can almost predict now, and I haven't even turned on the TV yet to see how the Western media is, is covering this, but I can just bet bottom dollars that the fact that Mr. Putin took over the investigation of that assassination personally is going to be spun by the Western media as Putin was behind it and is covering it up. See, we told you so. The man's a thug. Can't trust him. We need to protect the Ukraine and dismember Russia, and so on and so forth. That's the way it's going to be spun. Now, the problem here is, folks, Mr. Putin has nothing to gain either from that kind of assassination and more particularly does not have anything to gain by looking like he had anything to do with it in taking over the, personal, the investigation of the crime personally and making sure it gets handled. What that is a signal to me is that he perhaps thinks that this was a false flag operation designed to make him look guilty, and he wants to make sure. In other words, it's a national security issue for him. It's an attempt, the first probably of many, to have provocation incidents designed ultimately to weaken and perhaps overthrow his government. All right. So in other words, he's reacting, in my opinion, out of national security, regardless of how it is being spun right now on the Western media. He has nothing to gain, absolutely nothing, by stepping in to take over the investigation other than to ensure that the, whatever evidence may point to another foreign player in the event gets out there. So in other words, this event itself is, I think, a signal that we are looking at a huge heating up now in 2015 of the propaganda war. This is Cold War version 2.0, in other words. But this time around, the attempt to demonize Russia and to exculpate the horrible associations of the regime that the West installed in Kiev, this time around, the propaganda uh, light of truth is not necessarily guaranteed to lie with Washington and the West. This is the problem now that the West faces. It has squandered in a few short years, it has squandered whatever moral capital had been built up during the Cold War, which had been built up during the aftermath of the collapse of the Soviet Union. That moral trust is squandered. It is gone. And no amount of propaganda is going to get it back. It's the policies themselves that have to be examined. But in the meantime, in the lack of that examination, we're going to continue to see more verbiage and more spin on Western policy. And we're going to see more acts like this, I fear, that are going to be centers of the propaganda war between the BRICS bloc and the West. So that's it for my news and views this week, folks. See you on the flip side, everybody, and God bless.